and welcome back to part two of our Astro Crash Course. I know this doesn't look that exciting yet, but we will continue setting up our Astro application. In the last video, if you didn't watch it, we set up our basic Astro app with our Strapi backend to help us allow to manage our data easily. And so far, we haven't done anything in our Astro project. So I felt like the first thing we should do is let's do a brief introduction to Astro components. So if we take a look here in the source, we have our assets, which could be your images, uh, anything else that you wanna have in your project. Then we have our components folder. This is where you, you're going to have your Astro components, which you're gonna take a look at in just a minute. Then you have your layout and the layout is exactly like it sounds. It's going to be a layout for your pages to which you could pass children to render different things. And we'll explore them more in greater detail. And then you have your pages. And this is going to be where we're going to have different pages of our website, like our index page, which is going to be our landing page. Then we'll have our blog page. And we'll actually take a look how to create dynamic pages. All the other files we could look in more detail in just a little bit. But for now, I just wanna take a look here in the layouts layout astro file and if you take a look at the file here right from the beginning notice that this literally looks like html astro does use jsx like syntax but the cool part it's literally very similar to basic html with some cool ways of you being able to use javascript in line what's also really cool about noise that you could add your styles in style tags so everything lives in one page and in this layout you see the slot here and this is kind of like the children's prop kind of if you were using react but if you take a look on the pages index.astro notice we are pulling in our layout and we're showing our welcome component that we're going to take a look at and this welcome component gets rendered via this slot component and so if we take a look at our ui notice this is our welcome component and you know that it's our welcome because it will go to our welcome to astro and to get started and i'll say get excited and we make this change here when i go back to my application notice that you could see that it made that change get excited and i am excited and our layout, for instance, here, big, jumping back into our layout, this is exactly kind of where we could add our footer. So let's say we make a div here and we're going to say this will be our header. I know I said footer, but I meant to say, uh, you know, header. And now here on the bottom, we're going to have our footer. And notice if you want to have a layout that is used by in multiple places, you could create a layout component and you could pass children to it and utilize the layout. At the end of the day, we're going to use Tailwind, but the cool thing I want to show you here, it's how easily you could just you write and create stuff with HTML and CSS. For instance, here, like if I want to style this, I could give it a class and I'm going to call it, let's say box. It's fine. And I'll do this same thing for the footer here. I'm going to say box because we want to use the class. And here in the styles, I could add basic CSS and some styling. So we could say display flex, justify content center, justify items center. And then we could do margin auto and let's give padding all around. Let's do four rem we could just as easily add background color. We'll do it uh, aqua, noise, boom. And so notice how easily we're able to add CSS. The cool part, you could just as easily add your JavaScript. But before we do that, let's take a look at our welcome.astro file, because this is a great example to kind of break down the structure of astro components so here we have our front matter then we have our body where we have all of our html and then we have the style tags where we're able to add css and again in our case we're going to use tailwind that we'll set up in a few minutes 
and you can also add vanilla JavaScript between the script tags. This is pretty cool. What is the front matter? The front matter block can be optional, but this is where you write your server side JavaScript. For instance, we could use fetch here to get some data. For example, we could use the JSON placeholder API and I could go ahead and copy this as an example. And here we could say const response equals await fetch. And we're going to paste in that example. And instead of getting one to do, we're going to get all the to do's. And then we could say const the data equals await response dot JSON. And then we can console dot log our data. And this is going to be seen in our terminal. Notice how we have all the items and boy, we're fetching a lot of items, which is kind of cool. And we're going to say const first five posts to do's. And we're going to say data dot slice. And we're going to say from zero to four. This should get our five items. And what we could do here before our hero section, let's just display it here at the top. We're going to have a div. And what we're going to do is just map through our items and our TypeScript is going to com complain because we didn't give it any types. Let's go ahead and do that. And here at the top before our response, we're going to create a to do type, which has our user ID, our, uh, which is a number, our ID, which is a number, our title, which is a string and completed as a Boolean. And this is what we saw here in the response. And here, just to keep things simple, we're going to say as to do array and boom, notice that our TypeScript stops complaining. And instead of using data here, what am I doing? I just want to show five items because if we take a look at our application, Jesus Christ, we see all the items. No, we just wanted our first five to do's. That's why I did this here in the first place. We're going to go ahead and use that instead. And so now when we take a look, we have one, two, three, four items. Okay. Correction. If you do want five, you want to do from where you want to start because it's putting it in between. So we want to say five. And now, now we have our five items, one, two, three, four, five. This is fantastic. So the whole point regardless is that the front matter is where you're able to write your server side code. And then in the body, you're able to use that data and use it to render your application. When your application builds and renders, you're going to have a statically generated website. For instance, if we inspect the page here, and we click on, on our items here. Notice we have our data with all of its children and it's our static HTML and all that JavaScript that we wrote here gets stripped out, which is amazing. Now we learned about the front matter. We took a look at the body and we already looked how we could apply styles, but you can also write vanilla JavaScript in the script tags. We're going to have a very simple example. We have this read our docs button that links to amazing Astro docs. Let's not break it, but I just want to show you any place, any help you need. Check out the docs. It's an amazing resource. Of course, I'm going to walk you through all the steps ourselves, but the docs are there. They are your best friend. Please use them. So now let's create a new button. And what we're going to do just to make it obvious. I'm just going to delete the section, but keep our items as an example for you. And let's add a button. We're going to say button and we're going to give it class of button. And we're going to give it an ID of alert button, because when you click it, we want to show an alert. And then we're going to say, click me just like this. And in the styles, we're just going to give it some basic styles here. We gave it a class name of button and wouldn't this be easier if we just had tailwind? Yes. We're going to set up in just a second. We're going to say background color blue 
color white sound i want color white white wheat whatever works let's give it some padding we're gonna say two ram all around it doesn't have to be pretty button we just want to have a button that we could see and we're just going to say cursor pointer perfect so now if we look we have the ugliest looking button here but that's because we have flex being applied somewhere so to fix this let's go ahead and look at our style and we're doing flex here on main let's remove that and boom again the point is not the css we don't need it to look pretty we just have to have a button that we could click on even though it's all the way to the left and looks crazy stupid because i'll show you a secret in just a minute but now that we have our button what we're going to do is we're going to target our button via the alert button class and here in between the scripts tags we're going to write some vanilla javascript and it's going to be a very basic example we're using document add event listener and we are targeting our button via the alert button which is the id that we gave it and we are getting our element by id of course we using some typescript and then we're adding an event listener to say unclick go ahead and fire this alert so let's check it out so boom we click and we see our alert how amazing now i know our website looks hideous and we're going to fix this in one minute but the most important part that i want to share with you the front matter is where you're able to write your server side code they get stripped out when our project gets built inside the body we're able to use our javascript in line for instance we got our data from our json placeholder api and we were able to display it even though it looked uglier than the ugliest rabbit that i've ever seen in my life and then we made the click button work because we made a button and we targeted that button with vanilla javascript and one thing i want to say that's refreshing is the fact that we are not using too many crazy things but we're literally writing vanilla css vanilla javascript with pretty much vanilla html and that to me is exciting so now that we have the basics let me show you how easily you're able to install Tailwind in the next video.